Hello everyone! Do you ever find yourself working hard on your English journey but feel like your progress is slow? You're not alone. The key lies in finding the right techniques to guide your learning. Today, we've got you covered with three game-changing tips that will make learning English a breeze. Okay, ready? The first tip is avoid repetition and upgrading your vocabulary. Does it sound interesting? Let's meet Kimberly. She will help us on this. I'm Teacher Kim from AIA and I'm here to help. Today, we're learning more words to improve your fluency and avoid word repetition. During the lesson, feel free to pause to practice and or comment below if you have any questions. Let's begin. First up, beautiful. Beautiful. This adjective means hermoso. To use it in a sentence, you would say, Hawaii has so many beautiful places. You look absolutely beautiful. You look absolutely beautiful. Another word to use instead of beautiful is stunning. 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 Stunning means impresionante. For example, instead of saying many beautiful places, you could say, Hawaii has so many stunning places. It was just stunning. It was just stunning. Another word to use instead of beautiful is gorgeous. Gorge s. Gorgeous. This word means esplendido. So instead of saying Hawaii has so many beautiful places, you could say Hawaii has so many gorgeous places. This also reminds me of the Taylor Swift song where she sings, You're so gorgeous. <laughs> She's gorgeous. She's gorgeous. Difficult. This overused adjective means difficile. To use it in a sentence, you would say, they gave her a difficult task. It's difficult for me. It's difficult for me. Another word to use instead of difficult is tough. 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 This word means complicado. For example, instead of saying they gave her a difficult task, you could say they gave her a tough task. It's a tough decision. It's a tough decision. Another word to use instead of difficult is challenging. 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 This word means desafiante. So instead of saying they gave her a difficult task, you could say they gave her a challenging task. It's challenging. Is challenging. Ah, te quería mencionar que acaba de hacer, acaba de terminar un nuevo entrenamiento 100% gratis para enseñarte 7 trucos para aprender inglés más rápido, para hablar más fluido. Ahora mismo puedes bajarlo con el enlace pegado en el primer comentario. Expensive. Expensive means caro. To use it in a sentence, you would say, her diamond ring is so expensive. Parking's too expensive here. Parking's too expensive here. Another word to use instead of expensive is costly. 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 This means costoso. For example, instead of saying the ring is so expensive, you could say, her diamond ring is so costly. Extremely costly method. Extremely costly method. Another word to use instead of expensive is pricey. Price e. Pricey. This adjective also means caro. So instead of saying her diamond ring is so expensive, you could say her diamond ring is so pricey. It's a bit pricey for us. It's a bit pricey for us. Big. We know big means grande. So for example, you might say the mall has a big selection of stores. It was a big dog. It was a big dog. But sometimes there are better words to describe what you are trying to say. Another word you could use instead of big is wide. 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 Wide means amplio or ancho. For example, instead of saying, the mall has a big selection of stores, you could say, the mall has a wide selection of stores. The ocean is wide. The ocean is wide. 
Another word to use instead of big is huge. 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 This means enorme. So instead of saying the mall has a big selection of stores, you could say the mall has a huge selection of stores. It's a huge network. It's a huge network. Now, how many words can you remember? Let's do a small quiz to test your memory. I'm going to describe pictures with basic words. I want you to try to repeat it, but use a better word. For example, to describe this picture, I'd say, this house is big. So you would say, this house is huge. You got it? Ready? Let's give it a go. She's got an expensive collection. That dress is beautiful. The last question on the exam was difficult. Great job! Smart. Smart means inteligente. To use it in a sentence, you would say, she came up with a smart solution. She's smart. She's smart. Another word to use instead of smart is clever. 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 Clever means ingenioso. For example, instead of saying she came up with a smart solution, you could say she came up with a clever solution. He's very clever. He's very clever. Another word to use instead of smart is intelligent. 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 This means inteligente. So instead of saying she came up with a smart solution, you could say she came up with an intelligent solution. There's an intelligent response. There's an intelligent response. Bad. Bad, which means malo, is also one of the most overused adjectives even by English speakers. For example, someone might say, it's such a bad situation. This is the bad time. This is the bad time. Now let's learn two words to use instead of bad, so you can impress your English-speaking friends. Another word to use instead of bad is terrible. 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 In Spanish, this means terrible. For example, instead of saying a bad situation, you could say, it's such a terrible situation. I have some terrible news. I have some terrible news. Another word to use instead of bad is awful. 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 Awful means horrible. So instead of saying, it's such a bad situation, you could say, it's such an awful situation. It's pretty awful. It's pretty awful. Tired. Tired means cansado. To use it in a sentence, you would say, he's tired after a long day. I'm just tired of it. I'm just tired of it. Another word to use instead of tired is exhausted. 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 In Spanish, this means exhausto. For example, instead of saying he's tired after a long day, you could say, He's exhausted after a long day. I'm so exhausted. I'm so exhausted. Another word to use instead of tired is wary. 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 Wary means agotado. So instead of saying he's tired after a long day, you could say he's wary after a long day. You look wary. You look wary. Remember to pause to practice, and if you have any questions, make sure to comment them below. Powerful. Powerful means poderoso. To use it in a sentence, you would say, his words were so powerful. You're a very powerful man. You're a very powerful man. Another adjective to use instead of powerful is mighty. Might mighty. This word means imponente, 
For example, instead of saying his words were so powerful, you would say his words were so mighty. I am mighty. I am mighty. Another adjective to use instead of powerful is influential. 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 Influential in Spanish means influyente. So instead of saying his words were so powerful, you could say his words were so influential. You're very influential. You're very influential. Cold. Cold. Cold or frío is definitely an adjective that many people repeat. For example, someone might say it's quite cold. It's so cold outside. It's so cold outside. Another word to use instead of cold is chilly. 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 Chilly also means frío. For example, instead of saying it's quite cold, you could say it's quite chilly. It's getting a little chilly. It's getting a little chilly. Another word to use instead of cold is brisk. 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 Brisk means fresco. So instead of saying it's quite cold, you could say it's quite brisk. That's brisk. That's brisk. Delicious. Delicious means delicioso. To use it in a sentence, you would say, the restaurant served delicious food. And they look delicious. And they look delicious. Another word to use instead of delicious is tasty. 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 Tasty means sobroso. For example, instead of saying the restaurant served delicious food, you could say the restaurant served tasty food. That was really tasty. That was really tasty. Another word to use instead of delicious is yummy. Yum e. Yummy. This adjective also means delicioso. So instead of saying the restaurant served delicious food, you could say the restaurant served yummy food. This looks so yummy. This looks so yummy. We've covered words to improve your fluency and avoid word repetition. Remember to practice these phrases and like or share this video. Wow! Thank you so much, Kim, for your amazing lesson. Now, as we journey forward, it's clear that enhancing your vocabulary is just the beginning of upgrading your English. Tip two, get away from basic phrases with advanced ones. Are you excited for the next step? Well, get ready to meet Andre. He's here to guide us through the next stage, transforming your everyday phrases to propel you from basic to advanced. I'm Teacher Andre from AIA. Well, in today's lesson, I'm going to give you some English expressions and then some common alternatives. I forgot about it. The alternative, it slipped my mind. It slipped my mind. It slipped my mind. It slipped my mind. Here we have a consonant cluster with S and L, slipped, slipped. And if you listen carefully, you'll hear a T sound at the end of the word slipped, slipped. It slipped my mind. It slipped my mind. It slipped my mind. It slipped my mind. It's very cheap. The alternative, it's a steal. It's a steal. It's a steal. It's a steal. Listen carefully for the T and the S in the word it's. 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 There's also a long vowel sound in the word steal. Eel. Steal. And if you listen carefully, you'll hear a linking between the two words it's and a. Uh. It's a. It's a. It's a steal. 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 
Y si tú quieres educar tu oído 100% gratis, tengo un entrenamiento que me tomó meses crear uh, que puedes bajar hoy en día 100% gratis. Educa tu oído hoy. Enlace en el primer comentario. I'll call you later. The alternative, let me get back to you. 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 And if you listen carefully, the two words let and me are actually combined. Let me, let me, let me get back to you. And listen carefully for the t sound in the word to, to you, t, to you. Let me get back 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 to you. I know, or I understand. The alternative, I get your point. I get your point. I get your point. I get your point. Listen carefully between the linking of get and your. Get your. Chore. Get your. Get your point. Also, if you listen carefully, the T at the end of the word point is not fully spoken. Point. Point. It's cut short. I get your point. 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 Okay. Want to do a speaking activity with me? I'm going to say some sentences and I want you to choose the best option as a response to my sentences. Got it? Okay, let's go. You know what I'm saying? Oh, this hat is only two dollars. Great job. Let's move on. It's very cold. The alternative, it's freezing. It's freezing. It's freezing. It's freezing. The stress of the word freezing is at the beginning. Freezing. Freezing. And once again, listen for the T and the S in the word it's. It's. It's, it's freezing. It's freezing. It's freezing. It's freezing. Don't misunderstand me. The alternative, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. Again, we don't complete the full pronunciation of T in don't and get. Don't get me. Don't get. Don't get me. And remember, the W is silent in the word wrong. Wrong. Don't get me 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 wrong. Hmm. I can't decide. The alternative, I can't make up my mind. 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 Once again, the T is cut short in can't. Can't. I can't make up. Listen for the uh sound in the word up, uh, up. And there's a linking between the words make and up, make up, make up. I can't make up my mind. 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 What are you doing? The alternative. What are you up to? 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 Listen carefully for the linking between what and are and you and up. What are? What are? You up? You up. You up. What are you up? What are you up? We have a falling intonation at the end. 
What are you up to? 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 I'm very certain. The alternative, I'm positive. I'm positive. I'm positive. I'm positive. Here, the stress of the word positive is at the beginning. Positive. Positive. I'm positive. I'm positive. I'm positive. I'm positive. Okay, I'm going to read some sentences. I want you to listen carefully and correct the mistakes in the sentences. After five seconds, I'll read the correct answers for you to check. Got it? Let's go. Don't wrong me. Don't get me wrong. What are you up at? What are you up to? What are you up to? How many answers did you get correct? Comment below so we can share with everyone. Now, what's the next expression for today's lesson? I'll pay the bill. The alternative, it's on me. It's on me. It's on me. Listen carefully for the linking between the two words it's and on. It's on. It's on. It's on me. 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 I'm very hungry. The alternative, I'm starving. I'm starving. I'm starving. The stress of the word starving is at the beginning. Starving. Starving. I'm starving. I'm starving. I'm starving. I'm starving. I don't understand. The alternative, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. And again, stop short of the full pronunciation of the letter T in don't. I don't get it. And if you listen carefully, you'll hear that linking between the two words get and it. Get it. Get it. I don't 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 get it. I agree. The alternative, I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. Listen carefully for the pronunciation of the word you. It sounds more y. Yeah. Y. Yeah. I feel you. 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 I don't have any money. The alternative, I'm broke. I'm broke. I'm broke. I'm broke. The word I'm is a contraction between the two words I and am. I'm. And listen carefully for the consonant cluster in the word broke. Broke. B R. Broke. I'm broke. I'm broke. I'm broke. I'm broke. Well, that's it for today's video. Okay, let's quickly summarize what we've learned. Today, we looked at English expressions and some of their common alternatives. But don't forget to practice these alternatives in your everyday English conversations. We'd love to hear from you and continue the conversation. And if you'd like to keep learning with us, Hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications. Hooray! Our path is pretty clear now. We've gone through two techniques. Now, if your primary goal in learning English is effective communication at work or in daily life, then mastering key English questions and answers is absolutely essential. And that leads us to our third tip. Tip three, extra. Become fluent with the most common questions and answers. 
Grab your notebook because it's time to jot down the most vital daily questions that will significantly enhance your conversational skills. Hello everybody, I'm teacher Silas. In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to answer 20 common questions in English, which are very important. What's the date today? Que fecha es hoy? What's the date today? With this question, we want to have our intonation falling at the end as it's a WH question. Who, what, when, where, why, and how. So, what's the date today? What's the date today? What's the date today? We can answer this question. It's month day. Es día de mes. It's November 8th. Dad, it's May 16th. For example, we can answer, It's October 22nd. Or, It's May 1st. It's June 2nd. It's November 8th. It's November 8th. Dad, it's May 16th. Dad, it's May 16th. Si este video te cuesta un poco y quieres empezar con un curso comprensivo gratis, el curso más comprensivo que hay aquí por YouTube, voy a dejar el enlace aquí para mi curso acá. También ahí puedes bajar un ebook y audio 100% gratis. También enlace en el primer comentario. Ya. Yeah. What time is it? ¿Qué hora es? What time is it? Here, we can use our linking between the words is it, is it, is it. What time is it? What time is it? What time is it? We can answer this question. It's time. Podemos contestar son las hora. It's 4 a.m. It's 3 o'clock. For example, it's 12 o'clock, or it's 1 p.m., it's 2.30 a.m. It's 4 a.m. It's 4 a.m. It's 3 o'clock. It's 3 o'clock. What's the weather like? Como esta el clima? What's the weather like? Here we're using the contraction form of what's for what is, what's. We also have the th sound in weather, weather. And with this question, we're going to have our falling intonation. What's the weather like? What's the weather like? What's the weather like? We can answer, it's hot, or it's cold. Hace calor, hace frío. <laughs> Again, we're going to use our contraction here for it's, it is, it's. <laughs> we can also answer, it's raining. Está lloviendo. It's raining. It's raining. How hot is it? ¿Qué tanto calor hace? Or, how cold is it? ¿Qué tan frío está? So how cold is it? How hot is it? We use this question to ask about the temperature. And here we're also going to be falling with our intonation. How hot is it? Or, how cold is it? So how cold is it? How cold is it? How hot is it? How hot is it? We can answer It's degrees Hace grado grados For example, we can say It's 90 degrees outside It's 82 degrees It's 82 degrees How are you feeling? ¿Cómo te sientes? How are you feeling? Here we're going to use our linking with the W sound between how and are. How wa wa. How are. How are. How are you feeling? 
How are you feeling? We can answer here, never better, nunca mejor. Never better, never better. Or simply, I'm all right, estoy bien. Here, we can use our linking with I'm all right, I'm all right, I'm all right. I'm all right, I'm all right. How was your day? ¿Qué tal estuvo tu día? How was your day? Here we're going to have our falling intonation. How was your day? How was your day? How was your day? How was your day? We can answer really good. Realmente bien. Really good. Really good. Or so busy. Muy ocupado. So busy. So busy. We can also say not too bad. No tan mal. Not too bad. Not too bad. What did you do yesterday? What'd you do yesterday? Here we can use our linking between the words did and you with the j, j sound. Did you. Did you. And we're going to have our falling intonation in this WH question. What did you do yesterday? 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 We can answer here I verb in past tense. I went to church. I listened to your songs. Podemos contestar yo y verbo en pasado. For example, I went to the movies. I went to church. I went to church. I listened to your songs. I listened to your songs. What are your hobbies? ¿Cuáles son sus pasatiempos? What are your hobbies? Here, we're also going to have our falling intonation and pay close attention to the Z sound at the end of hobbies. Hobbies. What are your hobbies? What are your hobbies? We can answer I like verb plus ing or I love verb plus ing. I love playing football. I like reading about the universe. Podemos contestar me gusta or me encanta más verbo y ing. For example, I love playing basketball. I love playing soccer. I love playing football. I love playing football. I like reading about the universe. I like reading about the universe. What do you do in your free time? ¿Qué haces en tu tiempo libre? What do you do in your free time? We use this question to ask about someone's free time activities. Utilizamos esto para preguntar sobre las actividades del tiempo libre de alguien. Here we can pronounce the words do you in a reduced form. Do you? Do you? So, what do you do in your free time? With the falling intonation at the end. What do you do in your free time? What do you do in your free time? We can answer I verb. Podemos contestar yo verbo. I read stuff. I see TV. We can answer this way to talk about our free time activities. Podemos contestar así para hablar sobre las actividades de tiempo libre. For example, I watch movies or I run in the park. I read stuff, I see TV. I read stuff, I see TV. When is your birthday? ¿Cuándo es tu cumpleaños? When is your birthday? We have the voiceless TH sound in birthday. Birth, birth, birthday. We want to be careful not to say birthday 
but rather birthday. Birthday. Here we also have our falling intonation. When's your birthday? When is your birthday? When is your birthday? We can answer here, it's month date. Podemos contestar, is in mes. Fecha? It's June 25th. For example, someone asks, when's your birthday? We can say here, it's August 26th. It's June 25th. It's June 25th. Do you speak English? Hablas inglés? Do you speak English? Here we can pronounce the reduced form of do you, do you, do you. And we're going to have the rising intonation with this question as it's a yes, no question. So, do you speak English? Do you speak English? Do you speak English? We can answer, I speak English very well. Podemos contestar, hablo inglés muy bien. I speak English very well. I speak English very well. Or we can say, just a little bit. Or podemos decir, solo un poco. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Are you married? Eres casado? Or eres casada? Are you married? Here we have the D, D, D sound at the end of married, D. And we're going to have our rising intonation as this is also a yes, no question. Are you married? Are you married? Are you married? We can answer, no, I'm single. Podemos contestar, no, soy soltero or soy soltera. No, no, I'm, I'm single. No, no, I'm, I'm single. Or we can say, yes, I'm married. Si, sí, estoy casado or estoy casada. Yes, I'm married. Yes, I'm married. What do you do? A que te dedicas? What do you do? We use this question to ask about somebody's job. Utilizamos esta pregunta para preguntar sobre el trabajo de alguien. We can also use the reduced form of do you, do ya, do ya. What do you do? What do you do? We can answer here, I'm a or I'm an job. Soy profesión. Or, I work in workplace. Trabajo en lugar de trabajo. Or we can say, I work as job. Yo trabajo como profesión. We can answer this way to introduce your job or profession. Podemos contestar así para presentar su trabajo o profesión. For example, I'm an architect. Or, I'm a businessman. Here, we're using the contraction form I'm for I am. I'm. I am a teacher. I am a teacher. And we can use our linking with work in, work in, work in. I work in the mall. I work in a bookstore. I work in a bookstore. Or, work as, work as. Work as. I work as a bank manager. I work as a decorator. I work as a decorator. What's your major? ¿Cuál es tu especialidad? What's your major? This question is used to ask what someone studies in college or the university. Esta pregunta utilizamos para preguntar a alguien ¿Qué se estudia en la universidad? Here we have the j, j sound in major, major. And we're going to have our falling intonation for this WH question. What's your major? What's your major? 
What's your major? What's your major? We can answer, well, I'm majoring in field. Podemos contestar, bueno, me estoy especializando en campo. Or we can answer, I study field. Yo estudio campo. We can answer this way to talk about what we study in the college or university. Utilizamos esta respuesta para explicar o hablar sobre lo que estudia en la universidad. For example, I study English or I study economics. I study history. I study history. Well, I'm majoring in biology. Well, I'm majoring in, in business administration. Well, I'm majoring in, in business administration. How long have you been working here? ¿Cuánto tiempo has trabajado aquí? How long have you been working here? Here we're going to have our falling intonation in this question. How long have you been working here? How long have you been working here? We can answer, I've been working here for time. I've been working here for 10 years. He estado trabajando aquí durante tiempo. For example, I've been working here for two years. I've been working here for 10 years. I've been working here for 10 years. Are you ready to order? ¿Estás listo para pedir? Are you ready to order? Here we're going to have our rising intonation. Are you ready to order? Are you ready to order? Are you ready to order? We can answer, I'd like name of food. Yes, I'd like a cheeseburger, please. Me gustaría nombre del comida. Here we're using the contraction form I'd for I would. I'd, I'd. For example, I'd like pizza. Yes, I'd like a cheeseburger, please. Yes, I'd like a cheeseburger, please. Or I'll have name of food. Quiero nombre de la comida. For example, I'll have pasta. I'll have a steak. I'll have a steak. How much is it? ¿Cuánto cuesta? How much is it? Here we can use our linking between much is it. Much is it. Much is it. How much is it? With our following intonation. How much is it? How much is it? We can answer, it's price. It's ten dollars. It's five dollars. Podemos contestar, son precio. For example, it's five dollars. It's ten dollars. It's ten dollars. It's five dollars. It's five dollars. Can you give me a hand? ¿Puedes echarme una mano? Can you give me a hand? We use this question to ask for help. Utilizamos esta pregunta para pedir ayuda. With the words give me, we can also pronounce in a reduced form give me, give me. Can you give me a hand? Here with our rising intonation. Can you give me a hand? Can you give me a hand? Can you give me a hand? We can answer in some different ways. No problem. No hay problema. Or, of course. Por supuesto. Or we can say, sorry, not at this moment. Lo siento, no en este momento. We use these to answer when somebody asks you for help. Utilizamos estos cuando alguien te pide su ayuda. We have the group of consonants with the PR in problem. Pr, pr, problem. And we can also use our linking between not, a, uh, Nada. Nada. Of course. Of course. No problem. No problem. 
Where do you want to go? ¿A dónde quieres ir? Where do you want to go? With the words do you, we can pronounce do you, do you, and also the words want to, we can reduce that to wanna, wanna. Where do you want to go? Where do you want to go? Where do you want to go? We can answer here, I'd like to go to place. I'd like to go again to um, Las Vegas, Nevada. Me gustaría ir al lugar. For example, I'd like to go to the library. I'd like to go again to um, Las Vegas, Nevada. I'd like to go again to um, Las Vegas, Nevada. Or, I want to go to place. I want to go to America. Quiero ir a lugar. For example, I want to go to the mall. I want to go to America. I want to go to America. What are your symptoms? ¿Cuáles son tus síntomas? What are your symptoms? This question is used to ask about someone's sickness. Esta pregunta es para preguntar sobre la enfermedad de alguien. We can use our linking with the words what are, what are, what are. And here we're going to have our falling intonation. What are your symptoms? What are your symptoms? What are your symptoms? We can answer this by saying, I've got symptoms. I've got a headache. Podemos contestar, tengo síntomas. For example, I've got a headache. Or, I've got a sore throat. I've got a cough. <laughs> I've got a headache. I've got a headache. Well, that's it for today. Let's take a moment to recap the three valuable tips I've shared. Can anyone tell me what they are? Upgrading vocabulary to avoid repetition. Transforming basic daily phrases to advanced native English expressions. And our extra tip, become fluent with the most common questions and answers. I hope you found these tips as useful and valuable as I do. Okay. Now, I have shared some strategies to help you learn English more easily. Now, it's your turn to practice and apply it in changing your ways to become fluent in English. If you found this lesson as helpful and valuable as I did, please give me a thumbs up and share and subscribe to the channel for more helpful tip videos just like this one. Also, check out the links in the description below to access additional free ebooks to further elevate your English proficiency. Thank you for joining me today.